What's up everybody? We're going to be tying a uh, version of a slider. This is an articulated slider. And uh, we're going to be using a Daiichi 2461 hook. This one is a size 1. Very good streamer hook. It's a, about a 3x long with a straight eye. Uh, anyway, I've got some white thread that I'm going to just start dressing this hook. And... Uh, if you've seen the sparkle bugger, or the sparkle minnow, I should say, um, that's so popular, uh, it's a little trout streamer, that had a lot of influence on this fly, because we're going to be using gold ice stub for the body, and you'll see that in just a second. So this fly is going to be tan on the top and white on the bottom, and it's going to ride inverse, so the hook point's going to ride up. So anyway... The color that I want to be on top of the fly, the marabou color, I want to tie it in first. So I'm going to use just some tan marabou. You can use tan, light brown, uh, goldish colors. Just to peel off a healthy chunk and just tie that in right here. Maybe one more clump. Now the bottom of the fly is going to be white. So I'm going to take some white marabou. I'm going to take some white marabou and just tie that in on the bottom, which is really the top right now. Confusing until you see us attach this. is This is the back half of the hook, but when we attach it to the front, you'll see. Moisten your fingers to preen down the marabou. Okay, we're going to make a dubbing loop, and on this one, it is critical to have wax on your thread because we're going to, th this ice dub that we're going to put in the thread is really slippery. So I'm going to make a pretty generous uh, loop, maybe seven, eight inches. And you see what I did here? The, the loop is somewhat open right here. So right where it meets the fly, it's not all the way closed, so I'm going to take my thread behind the loop just one time and that will close up that loop so that your, your materials stick in it better. So now I'm just going to take some touch dub wax or you know whatever wax you have will work and you just kind of get the thread nice and waxy. Take your uh, dubbing twister tool and stick it in there. Now I want to show you this ice dub. It's different. The the gold, silver, copper, I think steely blue, the red um, ice dubs are a different consistency. So as you can see when you pull it out they're very straight fibers and really flowy fibers. Very similar to ice wing fiber. So anyway we're gonna stick this in our dubbing loop and brush it out. So there I've got a healthy dubbing loop, but you can see that because I pulled the fibers out of the corner of the bag like this, I was able to pull those fibers out and they're basically all facing the same direction. So I've got it all spun up and some of the fibers bound down, but if you just take a, a dubbing tool, Velcro, whatever, and brush it out, those fibers will come right out of there. So there you go, it's all brushed out. And this is this right now is very similar to some of the brushes that you see sold like this, the dubbing brushes, but it's really easy just to make your own. And if you take all those and just preen them to one direction, Curtis's favorite boy band, One Direction, right? Then you can, uh, it, it makes it pretty easy to wrap them. So once you get going, you, you might trap some of these fibers down. That's completely fine. Not a big deal at all. So once you've got your body tied in, I'm going to come in here and pick it out. Now 
And if you guys know what this does in the water, you're already seeing how, how much movement this fly is going to have. So at this point, I'm just going to leave it as is, but if you want a little bit more bulk, you can add like a soft hackle collar of marabou or uh, some Coq de Leon, something like that. But at this point, I'm just going to whip finish it. And I'm going to just take a little bit of flow as head cement here. Make your streamers bulletproof. All right, the, the back hook on this fly was a size 2 Daiichi 2461, and this one is a size 1 aught. And so, and, and this front hook, you can also make it uh, like a uh, an Allen B200 as well, you know, something with a wider gape. The key is you just want the hook point to be far enough away from the head so that it will still hook up. And again, remember where this fly is going to be inverted. So keep that in mind as you do this. Uh, first thing we're going to do is tie in some 5.5 millimeter uh, barbell eyes. Um, and unlike some of the other flies that we've tied with barbell eyes, where they're kind of further back, like the Sculpito and the Cheech Leech, this one we're going to tie really close to the eye. So you can see that's about how far back I am with these. So I'm just going to add some figure eight wraps and now I'll just seat it with some super glue. Now I'm going to take some articulation wire and just tie that in right here behind the eye with some hanging over the eye so you can double that back and go a little bit down the bend of the hook and that will help it so that your, your back half of your fly doesn't hang up on the front half of your fly. For the separating beads, we're going to put two of our articulation beads in nuclear corn colored. It's a, it's a yellow coloration. And now we're going to put the back half of the fly on. And when you, when you pull that through, you want to make sure that your beads have a little bit of, of play here. Um, you don't want it too tight or else your back half won't move as much. So you really want to reinforce this back part right where you tie your wire in. And then you can just go up to the eye. Once you have that tied in, just bend those wires back. You can see on the mongoose with this material clip, I just stick the, the fly in the springs kind of at an angle and it will hold it right out of the way for me. Now. For this portion, I'm going to add another chunk of marabou, but I'm only going to use the color that I used on the bottom. So I'm just going to add some more white marabou here. Now I'm going to form the body of the front half of the fly the same way I did the back half. All right, at this point of the fly, we're going to switch over to 200 denier Vivas GSP. Uh, and the, the 200 denier is a little bit more ideal for deer hair because it won't cut through the hair as easily. So uh, we really dig it. So if I just tie this GSP in and just wrap back over my last wraps of, of the other thread... I'll be good to go. Okay, so this is where the rubber meets the road right here. We're going to build a head of two colors of deer hair. We're going to use white and we're going to use camel. And uh, deer belly hair definitely makes this fly a lot easier. I mean, it's not a must, but it makes it a lot less frustrating. And then as you, you're going to see, we're going to be using pretty big clumps of hair. And so this Magnum Stacker from Peak, I mean, look at the size of that. It, it's, it's really ideal for, for this, uh, this application of using big, big chunks of hair. Okay, so here's a tip on putting deer hair. This is a pretty deep uh, packer and the hair's not quite that long. And so if you kind of hold it at an angle and put it in on an angle and just kind of let it 
slide down to the bottom. Now you can turn it upright um, to start aligning the tips. Okay, so now if I'm holding my my stacker this way, um, I'm going to be able to pull out the tips facing this way toward the, the back of the fly. And the tips are going to face that way. So the fewer times you have to change hair from hand to hand, the better. So it's important that uh, if you want your tips to face that way on the fly, that's how you pull it out of your hair stacker. So here we have it pretty much lined up. Okay, so I'm going to kind of grab it with all my fingers like this so that I can get a feel for what, where I want it on the hook. Now, and this is kind of a longer shanked hook, so I'm going to want the, the tips to be maybe right where the hook point ends. So I'm going to be all hands here. You, you might not be able to see this very well because i got to grab it really well. But I'm going to basically place the, the hair where I want it and take one wrap over the hair and just let the thread hang. It's not got any pressure. And then just take one more wrap of thread over it. And the cool thing about the barbell eyes is it keeps the hair right on top of the hook shank where you want it. Now I'm just going to pull straight down and I, my hands aren't off the hair yet. So there I, I have it. I've pulled it straight down. And I'm going to now take my finger and put a little... Uh, dividing spot in this hair so I can tie in another clump. So it kind of looks like a crater in the hair. Um, and a lot of people have asked, well, how do you get your hair so tight? And it's a lot easier if you use two colors to get it really, really tight. Because now, I mean, this is pretty tight right here, but if I'm putting another clump of hair down into that and cranking it into this clump of hair, it's really going to make it compact. So I'm going to prepare another clump of hair just like I did the first one. This clump of hair isn't quite as big as the first one, maybe half the size. Um, so, so don't try to clump, clump this much hair on top of it. So just a little bit less. Okay, now I've got this clump of hair and I'm going to put it in so that the tips are touching the hook point. You always want to line it up with the hook again because these hairs are kind of, uh, I mean, they've, they've been tied in, so they might not be true to where you want to lay it down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it right right on that hook point like I, I did the last one. And so I'm, I'm holding it right in the place where I want it, and I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to wiggle it so I don't trap any white hairs, and just come down on the other side. Again, really loosely, do the same thing so that I have two wraps over it now. And I'll see if I can uh, show you what this looks like when I pull it tight. So here I've got it. And if I just pull straight down on this, it's going to flare perfectly in the middle of that clump. So now my thread is right underneath these barbell eyes. And I want to just kind of leave it right there and hang. Maybe, maybe do a, a wrap around those barbell eyes to kind of lock in that last clump of hair. So now I'm going to take a, a clump of Bruiser Blend Junior in, in a tan color and I'm going to tie that as kind of a belly. So now that I have that all nice and stacked and aligned, I'm going to... And the other thing is, if I were just to rotate my vise right now um, without holding onto the thread and rotating my thread with it, the thread would actually you know, fall down into the hair and maybe trap some things down. So you got to make sure that when you rotate your vise, you're rotating with your thread at the same time and holding it up out of the way. So I'm just going to take this clump, and I'll see if I can get a good view for you, and just putting it right on top here, and going around the barbell eyes. Okay, you get the picture. I'm not going to be able to show you this because I can't see it. But instead of wrapping it around the hook shank, I'm just wrapping, wrapping it around these barbell eyes. And it only takes about two wraps for this to be really secure. Um, 
The other thing to remember here is because this is GSP thread, this bruiser blend might slip out after you've been fishing it for quite a while. So what I'm going to do is just take a tiny bit of super glue and super glue that tie-in spot. And so I've learned as I've tied so many of these that it's just easiest to come in with a razor blade and cut your thread right here instead of uh, having to mess with a whip finish on this. You've super glued it, it's not going anywhere. All right, so there it is, the slider, no. Um, so at this point, you're gonna wanna make sure that you, all your hair is kind of picked out, it's not laying down. So one of these little combs, if you've done it right, you should barely be able to stick it in there. It should be really super tight. But I just like to give it a quick comb before I cut. Okay, so I've got my double-sided razor blade. This is a brand new blade. I can usually get about three flies per blade. And the idea, the, the way that you can test it is if you come in here and try to cut your, your deer hair with your blade and it's not immediately going through the hair, your blade's too dull. Okay, so I'm going to take the blade and you can, you can uh, flex these blades quite a bit. And so I'm going to flex the blade and basically come up over the, the fly here. So I'm going to flex it so that the blade is essentially touching each side of these barbell eyes. And that's how I'm going to gauge how thick this head is. And you just come up through and stop a little bit of the way up to make sure that you're not cutting too far into the tips. And then just match up that curve and go a little bit further. So now when you're when you're done you need may need to straighten the blade back out and just kind of come in and, and trim up some of these tag ends right behind the eyes. And then uh, come in with your straight blade and see if you can get some of these uh, hairs going up over the eye of the hook. And then to finish it off, you, you just come in and trim out any of the fibers that you need to with your really fine point scissors. Alright, there you have it. The articulated version of our slider.